Welcome everyone to today's episode. For all the low-level DOS stuff as well as our upcoming PS3 graphic acceleration enablement, I wanted to start with something more simple and easy and lightweight. This S3 Verge, one of the first 3D accelerators. And I actually got this original register specification back in the day when I was even in school and doing programming stuff for fun at home on the CBIT trade show. And we basically just walked to the booth, my friend and I, and said, hey look, we are some young programmers, we obviously need this register specification stuff to use the 3D accelerator. So this A3 guys, back in the day, they were looking at us like aliens. And after convincing them that we can really program, even in assembly and such, they eventually walked to the back room and handed us this nice book, which I still have mine. Obviously had the card back in the day, which is similar to this one. Of all the vintage stuff in my parents' basement, the only thing I could not find was my graphic card, with, which was an Elsa Victory 3D. My father probably installed that one, as we all didn't have use for it after some years, at some neighbors or friends' PC and stuff like that. So I got this the other day. This is a slightly higher performance, not as deaccelerator, a little bit more accelerator. DX version, which is supposed to be maybe sometimes twice as fast. Back in the day, we actually, although we were fluid in assembly and VGA programming and such, we could not get this to work without source samples and such. Debugging under DOS was just too much of a nightmare, so we were poking around in registers and usually it didn't work. Also, protected mode was new to us and, uh, and so on and so on. And again, debugging under DOS wasn't that easy. When something crashed, then you had to reboot. And to start even more simple, we will not use this in the beginning. We will use something even more simple, which is this S3 Trio 64. Even more vintage than that. And this kind of generation were the first 2D accelerator. So those cards can draw lines and fill rectangles and also screen-to-screen -screen copy things, for example for window movement or sprite copies, and also have a hardware cursor. Today I wanted to quickly go through how this graphic programming looks when you do this bare metal programming, and obviously we start with the simple cards because today's more advanced cards are still similar, just more registers, more functions, so everything is just more complex for the most part, so I thought it's nice to get started with something simple that you can do yourself with just a few hundred lines of code in DOS or an emulator. And for the first step we will also use an emulator, so for the S3 Trio card we will use DOSBox, which is emulating a similar card. You do not need a paper book, in the meantime you find some PDFs in the internet, and also if you buy a state-of-the-art graphic card from NVIDIA, in my opinion professional people like us, programmers and such, deserve the full register specification. I don't think it is okay that they keep it secret for trade secret reasons whatsoever. I think we should always demand full specification and for Intel and AMD you can for the latest cards get them for the most part. So to get started, I coded this already the last days because I have the feeling the tinkering episodes are not as watched and people find it too boring. So to program here, you have seen in earlier episodes IO port and new stuff is memory mapped. To start with a hardware cursor. So what we do, we just need to put this cursor here in the video memory. Those first cards only had a two color cursor, so foreground and background color. Only cards from the last decade or so have a full RGBA true color cursor. So the first ones you could like make them black and white or blue and yellow or whatever you want. The nice thing about those cards is that everything is still really easy. So you have seen the earlier example where we were drawing a software cursor for the mouse, because I set the VGA cards you see here, as I said in the earlier episode, this is some cheap homemade software blitted CPU XOR cheap cursor thing from our earlier example, because the original VGA cards couldn't do hardware cursor, and so we now want to replace this with hardware. For this I wrote a few cursor functions. The first takes the VRAM address the colors, foreground, background, and some offset positions, and writes this into the register. So, writing it to this I.O. port, it's a CRTC index 39 hex, 
this unlock code to enable this additional registers. And then here is the cursor start address multiplied by 124 written to 4C and 4D. And that is exactly what we are doing here, 4C and 4D. I have here some VGA write helper that is taking the index and the data and then that saves us some open coded IO port access here. Here is the write CRTC. I, you can also specify mask to mask some existing bits. And if you don't mask existing bits, then it's just some IO word out to the CRT index with the value. And this is already slightly optimized. You can also do this in two 8 bit writes, but that works for me, at least in the emulators. Then the colors. These are some RGB color stacks that you write to index 4A and then three times for RGB for the foreground and for the background. Then you want to update the position, at which position the VGA output should blend it into the output signal. It's here 4647, 4647, and 48, 4948, 48, maybe we, as I just realized, if this is a recommended sequence, maybe you want to reverse this to avoid flicker or something. Anyway, very simple, just the positions in there. And um, that's all we mostly need for the hardware cursor. As I said, we also need to unlock the registers, which are here those writes. You see here 39A0, 39. This also unlocks some more registers already. So initially we do the extended register unlocking. As you can see, I have already some card detection for the next example. Then the only other thing that is required is converting our cursor image that we are reusing from our last software example. And we write this here to 720K in the video memory quite to the end or depending how much video memory your card has, leaving quite some space. In an even more sophisticated example, we could also detect the card memory and place it exactly at the very end. But for our introduction here, it doesn't matter that it's mostly at the end, unless you have a four megabyte cards and it's in the middle, but it doesn't matter so much. And then we go through all our pixels here. This cursor image, 64 pixels wide and 64 pixels high. Actually, I'm surprised quite large. I didn't remember that the cursors were so large. Obviously, most of the time this was not used by the OS. We go over all of these pixels and get the bit mask out of our own cursor here, this cursor variable. But our cursor is only 8 by 16, so only if it's in our own variable, then we determine if it's foreground and background color, depending here on this Windows Oryx ELF compatible mode. This mode bit is just changing the interpretation of this end and XOR bits here. And it's slightly funny though that they have this X11 compatible because this is actually worse in Windows because you have here cursor background and foreground color here and then on X11 only screen pixel. In my opinion this is not really needed and the driver could always just convert this to the more advanced Windows compatible encoding here that also has not only current screen pixel but also not current screen pixel which X11 apparently according to this table may not be able to do at least back in the day. So we convert this masks and write this here to the address, to our cursor address that we had here, 720k. And this masks and the color, as they are alternating interleaved here somewhere it was written. This is a thing with specifications, you always need to search a little bit left and right, up and down, where they had it written here. It is indeed, these bitmaps are word interleaved in a continuous area of display memory. So that's what we are doing here, we are word interleaving this. I think big Indian. Then we call our cursor functions, programming the cursor address, programming the cursor position, starting at the middle of the screen, and then enabling the cursor. Let's show you the result. And as you can see, we have our hardware cursor here in DOSBox, and as you can see, it's no longer fakey, transparent from our XOR nonsense, and a nice cursor that we don't need to render ourselves, and don't need to worry anymore about destroying the previous content. That is of course what you want in more sophisticated software, games, utilities, or even a whole operating system. This is of course only the first step to show you how cards advanced. Next, of course, we want to draw things. 
For this, again, we start with something simple, which is a solid line. Here are the accelerated programming examples. New MMIO. There are various address ranges, so this we are no longer doing with I.O. writes. This we are doing with memory mapped I.O., meaning that we directly write to this memory and this memory is writing into the registers of the hardware, making things much more easy than all this various poking of I.O. ports. So what we have to do is take these coordinates, x, y, 1 and 2, and fill the registers with those. What we can do is we can select the color to draw, foreground color, also mix with some of those functions you can also fill with pattern, the pixel count, and then the current XY coordinates into a 32-bit register, 16 bits each, first Y and then on the high bits X, then the length of pixels around the major axis, minus 1, and the steps, the diagonal step counts that you need to calculate here, and some error term for this Brezenham parameters. And then write this command into this command register, which is initiating the command and tells the graphic card to actually start working. So how does this look in source code? For this we have a line function, obviously, taking this parameter that you would expect, x, y, 1 and 2, and the color we want to fill. Sometimes I still have a to-do there, I theoretically, maybe you need to wait until the hardware acceleration engine is not busy anymore. We compute those values, dx and dy for the length on the axis, the maximum, the minimum, the direction, because we need to program into which direction to fill, left or right, and also if x or y is a major dimension, meaning the longer dimension, increasing faster. These error terms for the Brezenham algorithm. Here you see this register writes. They even have this here in x86 notation with some extra segment, making this look a little bit like assembler. These registers you find later. I also have here nice symbolic constants. I have them defined here in some enum, here as three registers with these values that you saw earlier. These are these memory mapped I.O. ranges with these register values. So you see alt current xy is 8100 hex and so on. So this is what we're doing just like it is written here. The only thing is as we are running in real mode, we are using my far pointer abstraction from my earlier video for this far pointer addressing here in regular C. We could, of course, write it like memory IO address frgd mix, but unfortunately, currently, this construct doesn't allow for this. But I think it's still readable enough. So, this are this mix, it's a mix type. I have here a comment for the bits specifying the mix type. There are various patterns or uh, such, the color, and so on. And then we write the command to the command register. I also have here a command specifying that. These bits are the command, and you can see this here already, y direction, x direction, y major, this 7, 6 and 5th bit, and there are also some more bits that you only need for other commands. So for a test, I draw here into all quadrants a circle, rotate this here by 15 degrees, so we draw there some dozens of lines, and also when we move the mouse, I draw a line to the current position. So let me show how this looks like. You see here is this quadrant of lines to test all combinations in various colors, as well as the lines drawn when we move the mouse to the current mouse position. And again, in this example, we are not drawing pixels by the CPU anymore. The only pixels we draw is the text output there with my self-made text splitting. Everything else is drawn by the hardware in this example. Next, we want to fill a rectangle. Again, the same concept, you see it here, it's even slightly easier than lines, in a way. And is 3 fill. As you can see, width and height minus 1, so we decrement those, fill this into the appropriate registers, and issue the command. Let's take a look on this as well. You see this filled rectangle. And the next interesting thing is, of course, a screen-to-screen -screen copy that you can use in a game to copy sprites to the screen, as well as in an operating system to move your window content. And there are various transfers, image data, they call it here through the plane and across the plane. I think one was expanding from one bit to multiple. You can read the text here, I think. This is also by the CPU, by the way, so you can fill by sending something from the CPU. From the CPU display memory, where is? Here's the right one. 
bit block transfer from the display memory location to another location on the display. Again, here is also a cross and through the plane. One is expanding bits, the other not, or something like that. Maybe there were also patterns available. Again, the same concept. Fill the registers with the values, source, destination, width, and issue the command. Here, the command are the high bits, which are 1-1 one, one here for bit BLT. As you can see in this example, we copied the screen content from the first quadrant to the fourth quadrant here. This is here 0, 0 to VGA with, which by the way has a typo. That of course you only notice days later on the YouTube video. By the way, notice the amazing round trip to time. Just edit start your DOSBox emulator with make and end DOSBox, super handy obviously. So, but it doesn't change the result except that we are not copying as much. And as I said, we copied this quadrant to this one and this is exactly what we got. Of course, the source code is already online and as you can see, really nicely sorted. Of course, we can always do it even better. For example, we could make here more symbolic constants for some more bits here, also this command here. But in general, this should be pretty readable and a nice example if you want to start some games, demos, programs or your own hobby operating system. And I usually suggest to start with easy things and then build on this more and more. That was today's quick walkthrough through this S3 acceleration start and in the next episode we will do even more advanced stuff with the Verge. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something and it would be awesome if you share, like and subscribe it and I hope to see you soon for all the next videos to come.